Hi there, someone sent me an email asking for some help on this problem, so I thought I'd go through it in a video. Uh, this is question 22 from uh, the paper 1H for the higher at Excel tier from the 2019 GCSE exams. Um, so let's firstly read through the question and then I'll talk about some strategies you could use to help you um, and then we'll go through a method to solve it. Um, so question 22, it says there are only red counters or R red counters and G green counters in a bag. A counter is taken at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is green is 3 over 7. The counter is put back in the bag. Two more red counters and three more green counters are put in the bag. A counter is taken at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is green is 6 over 13. Find the number of red counters and the number of green counters that were in the bag originally. So this question is as much algebra as it is probability. Actually, the knowledge of probability is pretty basic, but you need to understand how to use algebra to solve problems, um, quite complex problems. Um, so it's definitely a mix of those two. Um, and let's talk about uh, ways to start this off. Firstly, you should know that you're going to have to create some equations and then solve those equations. Um, so you could try to do it by trial and error. That's going to be very difficult. And also you're not going to get uh, many marks for trying to do this by trial and error. So you're going to have to set up some equations, solve those equations, and find these uh, unknowns R and G. I'd start with the basics. Even though it's obvious to set out what you already know, it actually does help you a lot in your thinking process. So what I would start off with is to say that uh, the number of red counters originally in the bag equals R and the number of green counters originally in the bag is G. Um, and, and they tell us the probability of picking a green counter is 3 over 7. And when they give you a value like that, you should think, okay, how do I create an equation out of that? How do I relate these unknowns, R and G, to this value they've given me? They haven't given you anything else. They haven't given you the number of counters in the bag. They haven't given you the number of red counters or green counters. They've only given you this probability. So you need to relate these unknowns to that value somehow. Um, so what's another way of writing the probability of green counters? Well, that's the number of green counters out of the total number of counters. Um, so what is the total number of counters? Well, that's the red counters plus the green counters. Another way of writing that would be R plus G, right? So the number of green counters is G. And the total number of counters, as I just said, is R plus G. All right, I've created my first equation. And I'm going to leave that there for a moment and then go on to the second part of this question. I've kind of split it up mentally into two parts. This is the first pick here. And then um, the second part of this problem will be the second pick. So what's going on in the second pick? They've told us that there's two more red counters, three more green counters. Um, so for the second pick, I need to write that down somehow. How could I write that information down? Uh, so what would be the number of red counters? Um, and another part of solving algebraic problems is you want to introduce as few unknowns as possible. The less unknowns you have, the easier the problem is going to be to solve. So I could introduce a new unknown here for the number of red counters in the second pick. Um, or I could use the unknowns I already have, and that will stop the problem from getting any more complex. So they've told me they've added two more red counters. So I could represent that as the original number of red counters plus two. And then for the green counters, again, we want to reduce the complexity. So use the unknowns you already have. It's going to be G plus three, right? And they told us the probability of picking a green in the second pick is six out of 13. And then again, we want to create an equation using the same logic we did in the first part of this problem. The number of green counters is now G plus three. And the total number of counters is now G plus three plus R plus two, right? because the total number of counters will be the number of green counters plus the number of red counters, and that's how we've represented them for the second pick. 
Now in the exam, I could understand if you'd followed this logic this far and then now you look at that equation and you might start to panic. You might think, okay, this looks way too complicated. This can't be the right way of doing it. But that's where you need to tell yourself, okay, if I just keep trying for a bit more, maybe it will simplify and then maybe I'll get to the right answer. So what is the problem with this equation here? Why can't I solve it for G or R? Well, it's because I have two unknowns and only one equation. But is there a way of substituting something in here for R in terms of G that will allow you to solve for G? So let's look back at the equation in the first pick, which was in terms of G and R. If I could rearrange that in terms of R, and then I could substitute it into the second equation, I'll be able to solve for G. So having a look at this equation here, I want to rearrange this in terms of R. Um, so I would cross multiply. So this is going to be three times R plus G equal to seven times G. Expand the brackets, that'll be three R plus three G equal to seven G. And then subtract that three G, this is going to be three R equals four G and then divide by three, so R will equal four G on three. Now I have a value for R, I can substitute in here, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, now with this equation, I'm going to swap it around so this part is on the left, I'm not changing anything yet, I'm just going to make that substitution. So on the top line, I've got G plus three. In the numerator, I have G plus three plus four G on three plus two, equal to six over 13. Now, if you get to this point, this should be where you breathe a sigh of relief because you have one unknown and one equation. That means you can solve this for the unknown. So this is really where uh, once you get through all those steps, I would be saying to myself, yes, I've done it. I now know how to get to the answer. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So firstly, you need to cross multiply. Uh, so multiply the G plus three by 13. Multiply the six by the denominator over here. So this will be six times G plus three plus four G on three plus two. Expand the brackets out. This will be 13 G plus 39 equal to six times G, six G, six times three, 18. Six times four G on three. Well, this is like six divided by three, which is two times four G, which is eight G plus six times two, which is 12, and then simplify. So on the right hand side of here, I have 18 plus 12, that's going to be 30. I might subtract that from the left hand side. So this is going to be 39 take 30 for these ones here, the 18 and the 12. I also have six G plus eight G, that would be 14 G. And then I might subtract that 13 G from the right hand side. Uh, okay, so I've done a bit of simplifying, a bit of rearranging there, hopefully you followed all of that. And now I have 39 take 30, which is nine, 14 G take 13 G, which is just G. Um, and I have G equal to nine. And then we need to find the number of red counters. We could do that using this equation here. Um, so we know that R equals four G on three. So if we substitute nine into this, this would be 36 on three, which is 12. So the number of red counters is 12. Um, so green is nine, red is 12. And then I'd go back to part of this problem and maybe just check that that, that fits as well. Check you haven't made any kind of small errors in your working out. So if we go back to the start of this problem, they told us the probability of getting a green counter is three on seven. Well, what would that be with the numbers we worked out? Well, that would be nine on the total. Nine plus 12 is 21. So it would be nine on 21. Does that simplify to three on seven? Well, if we divide by three, yes, it does simplify to three on seven. Uh, so I'd be pretty confident once I got those numbers and I checked they fit with the question, uh, I'd be pretty confident they're correct. Um, so that was how I would work through that problem. So it's really important to understand how to create equations out of a problem, how to introduce unknowns and work with those. And that all comes through practice and problem solving skills. And there are other strategies and ways of tackling this problem. Uh, if you had a different way of doing it, leave a comment. Let me know how, how you went through it or how, what method you used. 
Um, if you found this useful at all, please leave a like. If you want to see more content, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.